Hola subscribers, it's Bivs here from SlideNerd. Buenos dias. In this video, I will talk about two important things. One, how to store data from a background service into an SQLite database, especially from our job scheduler service. Two, how to load data inside a recycler view from a database, which is your SQLite database. If you go to YouTube user SlideNerd, in my playlist section, if you go to the material design series, last time I was talking about the job scheduler service with the help of an example. Now today I'll be talking about two more things. One is SQLite and async task. However, I won't be talking about them in detail because databases and SQLite is covered in this Android database playlist here, especially from video number 12 over here. And when you talk about async task, that's covered inside Android processes, threads and services. Again, in a lot of detail over here at the bottom with the help of nice examples. But we'll be using these in this video and hence I'll skip through it. At the end of the last video, I had told you three techniques and I had asked you which one is the best. If you go to google.com slash plus slide nerd, you'll be directed right to my Google Plus page where there's an intense discussion going on on what to do. It's right here in video number 45 in the comments where there's only one person who bothered to give me a nice answer and it would be Reynaldo Crossbound. Take a look at the detailed explanation he has given and insight that he has shared as to why and which technique would be the best. In this case, the second technique using database where we are going to store the data from a job scheduler service to our background SQLite is the best technique. And if you want to know more details, you can always come here and read this comment. Thanks for that, Rinaldo. So coming back to code, there is a class called Movies Database Java. It has an inner class called Movies Helper. I have simply created the database name the table name and all the necessary columns along with the create statement nothing great is going on here there's just the on create and the on upgrade if you go out there's our class called movies database that uses the movies helper here and there's an sqlite database object which i have opened inside my constructor for writing to it there are two methods one is called insert movies box office you give it an array list of the movies that you want to insert and there is a boolean variable if this boolean is true then it will erase all the previous entries and perform a fresh insert. If the entry is false, then it's going to simply append these new entries at the end of whatever we have inside our table currently. So I have made the optimized form of bulk insert in SQLite. I'll be covering this again inside my SQLite database tutorial series. So here if you see there's a bulk insert prepared statement and then I simply compile that statement, use a for loop, loop through the array list of movies, get the movie object at the current position simply bind the data that you need to bind and then execute your statement and at the end of it make sure that your transaction is successful there's another method called get all movies box office here simply initialize an empty array list specify the list of columns that you want to retrieve data from in our case that's all the columns make a simple query with the table name the columns and all other parameters as null this gives you a cursor the cursor is not now and you can move to the first position in the cursor then simply get create a new movie object and set the details on that movie object by extracting them from the cursor that's exactly what i've done and there are certain places where you may get a null value or minus one make sure that you handle that appropriately in your code and ultimately add that movie object to your array list and return that array list and there's of course the delete all method which simply means delete all the rows from our table all the data writing work is going to be done inside my service and fragment box office is not going to send any json requests anymore it will simply load data from the database for this we need to make a lot of changes inside the fragment box office right now if you go to on create view we check whether the active the fragment is starting for the first time or subsequent time if it's the first time we send a json request the method send json request looks something like this where we have the on response callback within which we get the list of movies by parsing that json object and then we set the adapter out here if you take a look at the parse json response method it was pretty ugly in the previous videos but now i have improved it to be pretty clean first of all i have covered the other fields which i skipped out in the other video now if you see there's a method called contains here if you go down and take a look at what the method does it simply takes a json object and it takes a key it checks three things is the json object not null does it have the key is the value of the key not null if true it returns true otherwise it returns false and that is exactly what i'm using everywhere now to parse the json response 
So going back to our my service class, let's create an async task inside our my service. There are two things that we are going to do inside this async task. One is to parse and load data from JSON because if you remember in the previous video, on start job runs on the main thread. Second is to write that loaded data to a database from here. Now there are going to be three parameters for the async task. That is params, progress, result. So params is going to be the job parameters. Make sure that it's a support job parameters class that is being used here. And the second parameter which is progress would be void. The results would again be job parameters. So once you do this, we can just press Alt Enter and implement the methods. So there you go. There's our do in background method that accepts the job parameters and returns null for the result. Now other than that, we can have our on pre execute and on post execute as well. So inside the on post execute, we are going to simply notify that our async task has finished executing. And that can be simply done by storing a reference to our job service. If you remember previously, inside the on start job method, we simply called job finished. But now we'll be doing this job finished from our async task once everything is completed inside the on post execute method. So we make the class static and we create a reference to my service here and we call it my service. We have a constructor for my task here and that would accept an argument of type my service here. Now inside our own post execute when everything is over we want to simply call this method job finish so we can cut this from here and we can put it over here saying that our job is finished. Now notice that we need to access it through the my service reference that we obtained. Now we go back to our on start job method. If you remember in the previous video I told you if you are running an async task we need to return true from here to indicate that processing will take place inside a background thread. So we simply write true here and we construct our object of task by simply saying new my task here pass a reference to our service that would be this in this case and we simply say execute in our case and we pass the job parameters. For the do in background method we don't really have something special to return. We'll simply take whatever parameters we get and return the first one since we are passing only one of them. Therefore we return parameters of zero. Now we come to the most important and tricky part of this entire video and that is to migrate code for loading and parsing JSON from the fragment box office to my service and that would include these methods that is get request URL, the one which says send JSON request, the one which says parse json request and the fourth one which i believe is contains method that we have here we won't need the handle volley error method because we won't be handling any more volley errors we are going to construct the request in a different different way inside my service so let's just cut these and put them inside my service go to the task which is my task since this is a static class it won't be able to access variables and properties of the outside class and therefore we are going to have to paste those things inside our my task class over here so i'll simply paste it and import all the necessary items out there and they're still going to give you some errors saying this is not found and that is not found so for starters it says handle volley error we can comment this out and we can fix that later so going back to fragment box office it says send json request gives an error just comment that out as well so going back to my service we won't need these three statements that talk about setting error responses or loading movies because we are going to do things differently now but we do need a request queue object and the volley singleton object if you remember so we go back to the fragment box office and we can take those things here we also need the date format so we're going to take this and the other two objects and move that inside our my task right here so import that go to fragment box office take your volley singleton instance and the image loader and request queue we won't need the image loader either because we are not going to load any images inside a service so we can get rid of the image loader if that makes you happy so at this point there seems to be only one error at the bottom and that is this toast message which i have printed by calling the get activity we can get rid of that toast message by simply commenting things out so fragment box office looks pretty good right now and we need to initialize it of course i forgot that if you remember we have to initialize the two variables that is volley singleton and our request queue so we can cut the code for this from our fragment box office go to the my service part and we can go right inside the constructor of our task and we can paste that over there so this completes the whole migration again the idea is simple you have my service you start the task and you do all the things inside your task and that would include the variables that you need the methods like loading the json feed the request url and parsing the json response to get an array list of objects 
So for the first step, we are going to load the JSON data from the Rotten Tomatoes API inside the do in background method of our async task. And there's a problem with this approach because right now we have the send JSON request method that has its own thread thanks to Wally. We don't want this because when we go to do in background and when we run stuff, if you call send JSON request, that's going to spawn its own thread. And we won't be able to keep track of this thread because once do in background finish executing, we come to the on post execute where we tell the service that our job is finished. So if the Wally thread is still running, we won't be able to do anything with it. And therefore, we don't want Wally to run on a separate thread. In fact, we want Wally to run on the same thread as our async task. How do we do this? From our current asynchronous request where Wally uses its own thread, we want to tell Wally that don't do that. Instead, run on the thread that is supplied to you. And that would be the thread created by our do in background method for our async task. And the way we do that is to use our class called request future. Now, the idea behind this whole request future is derived from the Java concept of futures. At the time of making this video, I have not talked about futures and callbacks in Java, but by the time you're watching this, I may have a nice discussion on that. The way is very simple. You are given a key and you're told that your car will be manufactured in the future. Now the key is perfectly valid, but when your car comes to you or your house, you're able to drive that car with the key that you already got right in the first place. And that's the whole idea behind request future. If you construct an object of request future, this request future object that you just created here is the key. This JSON object is going to be the car which you will get after some time. Now we need to modify our code by removing this listeners that we had. So we are going to remove both of them and we are going to set the future as our callback. So the way we do that is simply supply request future at both the places. There's request future for the errors and for the response out here. So press Control Alt L to reformat stuff and we are good to go. Now all we need to do is add the request like we did earlier. But now we are going to go here and we are going to say request future dot get and this is going to give us the JSON object. Now notice that this is a blocking call. In other words, the JSON object is going to be fetched right here in the same thread and your app is going to wait for some five seconds or four seconds or whatever till you get that JSON object from the internet. That isn't a problem for us because we are already using a background thread. So we can go here and store this inside our JSON object here and we can call that as response in our case. Now this is going to throw two different exceptions which we need to handle. Press Alt Enter here and say surround with try catch and there you go there's interrupted exception and there's an execution exception. In both the cases we are going to simply log our messages here by saying L.M and passing the E with appropriate string conversion needed to print the exception. Now the one last thing that we need to consider is we are calling get here and there is no indication of how long we should actually wait for this request to execute. If you see the documentation of Wally, there are two methods. There is one which is called get where you can supply a timeout and there is another one which calls get normally. If something goes wrong, the default get here, the first one that we are using currently is going to hang for an indefinite amount of time. So it's better we use the second one where we can supply a timeout indicating how long we should actually wait to retrieve the JSON object. Say the internet is not available, things could go wrong. So we can go here and we can specify the timeout as 30,000 indicating 30 seconds as the timeout. It's pretty massive, right? So you say time unit dot seconds in our case. Oops, time unit dot milliseconds in our case and that should take care of that. It says unhandled exception, concurrent timeout exception, yes. If you cross the timeout of 30,000, we will get a concurrent timeout exception, which is one more that we need to add. We can add a catch clause for that as well, and we can do the same thing of printing our L.M. Now, at this point, this is going to give us the object that is the JSON response object, which we were interested in. So let's do one thing. We can go to the top and make this JSON response object as some variable that we want to retrieve here and give it a value of null at the top here. We can give that value here to the response inside this and if something goes wrong, we can simply return null by simply going down and saying return. So we can change the return type of the method from void to JSON object now and that should take care of that. There's our send JSON request method that simply returns a JSON object containing the response. The best part is it runs in the same thread despite using Wally as your current thread. So we can go to our doing background method now and we can get the data by calling send JSON request. Here we can simply get the JSON object 
response here and we can pass this response just like we did earlier to the parse json response method that we had here so we can call parse json response at the top here and pass the json object that we just retrieved make sure that it's not null so we'll have to do a null check i don't know if i have done it inside the parse json response method oh yeah i have done it right here by saying response not equals null so we can directly call it so we can go back at the top and we can say response here pass it and this is going to give you an array list of movie objects that you want to store inside the database we can create an instance of the database inside my task here but the best place i feel would be the my application class what do you think about it because the database access is going to be needed both inside my service and the fragment box office where we are going to load the data once again so inside the my application class i have created a static instance of the database as you see here and i have a static method here where i simply check if the database is null if yes then i construct it otherwise i return the same object in other words it's a singleton instance that i'm trying to return from here so you can go back to my service now inside our doing background method all i need to do is say my application dot get writable database now this is going to give us a reference to the database on this we can directly call insert movies box office and there we supply our list movies that we want to write and there is a boolean which says clear or not we want to make sure that every time we write new data we want to completely erase the previous existing data and hence i'm gonna have to write a true over here so with that everything is complete for our my service part let's go to the fragment box office and fix how we can load the data from the database going back to our fragment box office the only thing that we need to do is load the data inside a recycler view and that can be done in one line because the code we have written is highly modular you go to the on create view method here and all you got to do is this if it's the first time the user is starting the app load the data from the database otherwise load it from the parsable that we already have and we can get a reference to our database if you remember by simply saying my application dot get writable database dot get all the movies now this is going to run on the main thread if you want to optimize this query you can use an async task or a loader at the time of making this video i haven't talked about loaders but i'll be adding something on it inside my database playlist as well so this is going to give you an array list of movie objects which we can directly store inside our instance variable which is list movies then we can set that with our adapter by simply saying adapter box office dot set movies list movies so with this we are completely done loading the data into the recycler view from a cursor so let's run the app just on one device to find out how it works so we are going to take our lollipop device here and there you go with our lollipop once you launch the app as you see there's a whole lot of things that are getting called here and if you go to our tab right now the problem is we don't see any data and that's because the on start job just executed as you saw in the toast message now if you click back here and you minimize our activity or exit our activity and now when you go back to our main activity and you go to the second tab that's when you see the data so in other words the first insert is something we are not getting notified about what do you think can be done about this how can we handle this is there a better strategy or what are the different techniques that can be used to resolve this but in this case you notice that if you go to the log cat you see the insert entries with the timestamp here for each entry that's being inserted and at the same time if you take a look at the retrieving entries part it also says loading entries here along with the timestamp for that which means it's working perfectly and loading entries doesn't work every time because we are loading only when it's the first first time the user has started our activity or fragment by going inside the spot where we are checking the saved instance state is null or not so in this video i have showed you how to do both things how to write to a database from a job scheduler service and how to load data from the database inside our recycler view but as you saw the code currently has some shortcomings what do you think should be done about this i will catch you in the next video if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let me know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching have a good night